Welcome once again. You're still watching NTV Weekend Edition on Talk of the Nation tonight. We dive into the COVID-19 uh, issue. We know that as uh, as a country, we're currently battling the second wave of COVID-19, and uh, with the surge in COVID-19 cases continuing to rise, really, the country has imposed a limited lockdown. However, with more people dying, there are also concerns about the mental health of people that lose their loved ones, but also those that tend to see uh, I mean on social media you know on their whatsapp updates the different people that are losing their battle to COVID-19 so tonight we want to pick the thoughts of Alana Kimbabazi who is the program manager right to health art the initiative for social and economic rights to dive into what we're currently dealing with and you at home what should you be thinking about as we go about the second wave of the COVID-19 a very good evening Alana thank you so much for joining us tonight on zoom Yes, thank you for having me, Sandra. It's good to be back. All right. Now, the question on most people's mind is we are dealing with the second wave of the COVID-19 pandemic and we are having 42 days into partial lockdown, you know. Uh, we have to go through the 42 days. Inter-district travel ban has been imposed and we're seeing children getting back home. Do you think this is the right thing for us to be doing at the moment? Will it address the issues that, at hand, that we have at hand now? Absolutely. What has happened in the last two weeks is terrifying. It was, however, expected. If you recall that uh, as of April, as the, towards the end of April, we had discovered the variant that originated from India. We saw the devastation it was doing there. And government was supposed to have been on alert and, and, and ready to expect this surge. Now, with schools closing, I mean, we've now realized that there were a lot of COVID cases undetected with that little testing and little oversight by the Ministry of Education and Health within schools. And with schools closing and sending all their kids back home, the numbers are bound to rise. Um, right now, there's a lot of anxiety. If you're like me, every time you open anything, messages, social media, phone calls, it is someone you know or love who has died or has been affected by COVID-19. And the government has talked a lot about following the SOPs, but we know that there's only so far the SOPs can, can mitigate this disease. The real question on everyone's mind is what has government been doing? Uh, we, a year ago or so, we got the first case and we were terrified and money was put together and budgets were appropriated. And luckily, the surge was not as bad as some thought it may be. So we, we got some time to really prepare. So the question on everyone's mind is the ICU beds. You know, this is a surge of a thousand something cases a day, and it's bound to get worse. But already at this point, people are failing to get ICU beds. People are struggling to get oxygen. They are failing to get oxygen in public health facilities and are dying as a result, particularly um, up country. And we are also seeing them over here rushing to private facilities to try and get oxygen where they are paying exorbitant fees for this. Uh, you know, we, ISIS researchers found people are paying in millions for cylinders and then you get the refill every couple of days. Uh, people have been failing to get space, like I say, for ICU. And, and, and there's a sense of what is going to happen and many people rush to try and get a vaccine dose but as you're aware the doses have been very scarce the implementation has been haphazard for so long they were saying priority groups then there was queue jumping while others were waiting then suddenly it was like everyone can go get it but maybe they cannot they say you go to kololo then kololo is being used for you know pallium you know the state of the nation and so forth um, so there's just been a lot of confusion and anxiety that proper planning could, could, could really have addressed. Um, and I, I'm particularly concerned about oxygen and, and the extent to which we are ready to make sure that people are able to be um, treated and handled because we do know that with this variant that the, that the, the incidence, you know, that the likelihood of you advancing to need critical care is, is pretty high and that is why it has been so concerning world over so given the money that was appropriated and almost a lot of the supplementary budgets there was always something about icu and oxygen we need to hear from our government our progress on getting ready for this surge 
ha, you know, we've had a lot of, 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 of talk over the last couple of months, right from even the Office of the Auditor General's uh, audits about whether or not ICU units that were supposed to have been set up have been fully set up. You recall that even as of December and, and the end of last year, people were complaining about um, oxygen plants be, not properly being maintained, not properly being set up. And right now, uh, it, it, you know, we are aware that the people who are the hospitals where they don't have maintenance, like Masaka and so forth, for the oxygen uh, plants, and this affects the lower units because the oxygen plants are supposed to be installed at the regional referral hospitals and to feed into the uh, lower units. Uh, oxygen cylinders have sometimes been stolen, and we know that recently in the media there were stories about that, uh, which is leaving people who don't have means, um, just unable to get the care they may need. Mm. But even those who have means, how many can afford? I've been seeing reports getting to me about people paying about 70 million for three days. How many of us can afford that? All right. So we uh, really need that. Alana, I do want to uh, cut you short on that, and I want us to specifically speak about the mental health, you know, uh, that people are currently having at the moment, if I'm, I am to put it that way. I did see your tweet where you mentioned that for every single time you log into social media, um, you will see rest in peace. There's so many, you know, it turned from far, people we didn't know, and now it is coming close at home, it is hitting home. Uh, for the people watching us tonight, how would we address the, the, the current state of affairs in terms of protecting our mental health? Yeah. Um, first of all, I want to just say I'm deeply sorry to those who have lost loved ones and to those who are ill or have loved ones who are ill. Um, and I did tweet that because for me that was my reality all around me. There was this so much stench of death. And I think that it's very important in these times to really prioritize your mental health. I know the ministry set out some numbers to get some free mental health counseling. Unfortunately, it's, it's in tweets. I saw Dr. Atwine tweeting, but that information needs to be set out. It's not only those who, who of us who are on social media that are grappling with mental health. I am hearing about similar mental health challenges from relatives, for example, in the village who have loved ones who are ill right now. So there has to be more concerted effort, I think, by the government to step up in terms of uh, providing mental health support um, but I also do think that part of the reason why your mental health gets so disturbed is you think what happens if I get sick will I get a space in hospital will I have oxygen will, you know there's the mental health of wondering whether your body will fight it off but I think in Uganda the anxiety is compounded by other things that are preventable a colleague recently wrote to me and said my mental health is is, is very uh, precarious right now because when I saw the cost of treatment, I was already not feeling well. I was hoping the home remedies work, but when I saw the cost of treatment, I just got, you know, that's when I began to lose it. I thought, this is it for me, you know? Um, so I think that it's very important as individuals that we're trying to encourage and check on our friends and, and, and pray for them and, and, and provide mental health support uh, or access it. But I also think it's very important for the government to come and sh and tell us the plan to address the surge. To Especially in terms, of, in terms of, 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 you know, when it gets to the vaccine, it is another issue that is causing anxiety among the general public of the vaccines are not enough. Let us also speak about the natural concoctions that we are seeing currently. I mean, is that something we should also be concerned about when it gets to health? Yeah, I mean, that the, 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 the all natural ingredients may be just a bit less because you find like it's like lemon, ginger, and so forth. But I've seen all kinds of things going around, and I think it's very important that, that the, you know, guidance is given because people are so desperate. You recall even the Echo, the, the, the Echo Farm list, which they have since disavowed, but the Echo Farm list that was going around with all these medications, the people were lining up and having caveras full of medications that are very problematic, some of them like dexamethasone, which could have a real impact on you later on if you're just using them without a doctor's prescription. We are already facing antibiotic resistance. It is likely to go up because now everyone is self-medicating and the concussions. But then again, for me, this comes back to the fact that people feel like they're on their own. Mm. They feel like the money was eaten and things were not done and they are on their own. And it's very important that, 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 that the Ministry of Health, the government gets ahead of this. I like that they recently sent out 
how to manage COVID at home because they had kept quiet about it within this current surge. That's why everyone who is a herbalist or who beat COVID or who is a pharmacist was circulating all kinds of things. So it's important that they put the information out there. It's important that they come and account for the COVID-19 money. We have not seen accountability. All right. And they tell us <laughs> what the real plans are. You, you think, Alana, when they do that, it's likely to put uh, the minds of Ugandans at ease, knowing where that money was and what they are planning to do and, uh, you know, what happens in the future in regards to how we address the pandemic. Not so. Exactly. So as we, I think if you recall last year when they told us if this happens, we are going to Nambole, people saw things, people said, oh, yeah, COVID is manageable, you know. Mm -hmm. But there's this sense right now that we have lost the plot on COVID-19. Mm -hmm. I know the president has tried to say some things about we bring up additional beds and so forth. But after the mismanagement that people saw, the tents that flew off that were supposed to have been bought with so much money, the mask that didn't arrive, there is a lot of citizen distrust. And it's, again, fostering this anxiety of thinking that you're on your own. So it's very important that government comes out, addresses access to oxygen, access to ICU, access to vaccines, um, and, and regulating the private sector who have decided to do price gorging on a level that we have not seen before. So it's important that they do so to address the anxiety of the population right now. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Alana Kimbabazi, from uh, the Initiative for Social and Economic Rights for joining us this evening on Zoom. And uh, thank you as well who's just joining us from wherever you are. We do want to, of course, send our condolences to everyone that has lost their loved ones. We know it is a difficult moment, but we ask you to keep strong and keep supportive of one another. And for you who's constantly logging into social media uh, and seeing all the different things that are likely to affect your mental health, I think it's very important important that you regulate what you consume from social media. Do take care of yourselves, of course, continue to uh, exercise and do the necessary uh, precautions that are needed, wear your mask, sanitize and avoid crowded places. We are in this together and we can, dress, we can of course, uh, address the situation at hand. It will definitely get better. You're still watching NTV Weekend Edition. We'll take a short break and we'll be back. Yes, please stay safe, people. As always, and please.